What's going on everybody? Brian from Mackey's Hot Rod Shop and Mackey and Machine. We're going to do a review of the 59 El Camino. We painted it gloss black. Probably look tired as hell because I am and we're grinding hard to get this thing completed. We still have a lot ahead of us, but I wanted to answer your questions and your comments uh, here on the channel. I appreciate everybody giving feedback. We also are going to give you guys some exciting news. So Stay tuned until the end of this video. We're going to unveil the owners. It's got a little surprise for you, so stay tuned for that. Let's get into it. So here's a comment off of part 15 where we go over the gaps. Comment was, the cost of this paint seems like a lot at the start, but it really isn't considering the mega hours going into it. Yeah, it's an incredible amount of hours to take a car from the condition that we began to the finished product now. I mean, it's it's insane. I don't even have a total number yet, but uh, when we finish with the complete paint and body, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to talk about that. So between the, the rust repair, the metal work, the metal finishing, the body work, block sanding, priming, painting, and then don't forget, we haven't even dropped the videos of color sanding and polishing. We're talking thousands of hours to paint a car of this size in gloss black. Hence why I look so tired. Part 16, the dark arts of restoration. We have a comment here. Can you get your car straight with Durablox? The internet is always stressing about polycarbonate blocks. What is your opinion? I started out using Durablox 20 years ago. Well, 20, 22, 23 years ago, I was actually using the wooden blocks. And then the Dura blocks came onto the scene. I used those, but I never had like that completely flat finish that we're talking about today. The only way to get there is the acrylic blocks. You can make them, you can buy them. Of course, we're using Big Kid Blocks. We love that brand, that company. I urge you to check them out. What's nice about the Big Kid Blocks too, I always forget to tell people this, but we do have a promo code for you guys if you're interested to buy them. Promo code super simple Mackey, M-A-C-K-E-Y. You can check them out. I think you get 10% off, check that out. Acrylic Blocks, it's the way to go hands down. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but spend the time, get that uh, skill set under your belt and uh, you will have Perfectly flat panels like this El Camino, hence why I'm so exhausted. All right, so just moving on forward with the next episode, part 17, block sanding primer for the next level results. You mentioned on here, it's a mental game. Like, give me, give me some insight of, you know, what, what that mental game is all when, about. When you're doing restoration work, it's two steps forward, one step back sometimes three forward and one back. It's crazy. It feels like taking a car to the highest possible level of your skill set is a mental game. You're constantly striving for perfection. It gets exhausting, you know? One of the greatest things about having a crew at a shop restore a car is that we have six or eight or 10 sets of eyes on the vehicle. So every day you're seeing something different. Like, I look at a panel, I see it differently from Brandon. He sees imperfections, I see imperfections. That's the best possible scenario for the customer because you have 150 years of combined experience, but it's exhausting because you're got, you're constantly checking each other's work. You know, you feel like you're right there at the edge of painting, but no, we need another day or we need another two days or we got two more hours, you know? And so a lot of times it really helps if you have a deadline. That's it, mental game, but stay with it and you too will have a beautiful paint job like this, hence why I'm so exhausted. And off that same episode, going back into the many hours that have been put into this car, how many hours of block sanding you think has gone into this build? So if you total the block sanding from the body filler through all the different coats of primer, we have over 600 hours. And then we're still gonna block sand the clear coat, so. Part 18 magic dust that makes your paint prep easy it makes no sense to block it and then use the da on it it's a great comment i read that one personally there's some truth to that what this guy's talking about is we use a longboard sanding block 28 inch 30 inch we're cutting the body filler and we're cutting the primer 40 80 150 grit 220 grit once we get to 220 maybe 320 anything after that all we're all we're really doing by using the next 
finer grit sandpaper is removing those sand scratches. When you use a six inch DA orbital, you're only getting a surface block sanded a little bit larger, say eight inch, maybe 10 inch if you're kind of giving 45 strokes. So what this guy's saying is that how do you go from a 32 inch block down to a eight inch block or on a six inch DA? Um, but again, remember we're using an interface pad, so it's a soft pad, and we're only removing the scratches. By the time you get to 400 grit, I personally don't see any advantage with block sanding 400 grit. All right, so here are a couple out of our latest episode, part 19, perfect paint right out of the spray gun. How come you don't paint the doors and everything at once at the same time? Is it too much? What they're talking about is why don't we just spray the car entirely together? The doors bolted on, the tailgate, the fenders, the hood. Um, when we're taking it to this level and it's a solid color, we can get away with spraying the door jams and the outer panels all at once. And then we can come back, we call it piece painting, so we can paint the body and then paint the doors and the fenders because the black is always gonna match perfectly right out of the can, the same gallon of paint. And typically with solid colors, you can get away with that. Metallics, we don't do that. We put, we jam the car, meaning we spray the jams and then we back tape them so we create a soft edge. And then we come back and we spray the entire vehicle because we want all those metallics to stick up and stay even throughout the whole car. Same with candies as well, candies and pearls. But on a solid color, it's great. We can spray the exterior, doors off, tailgate off, fender off, hood off. And what happens is we get clear to wrap around the edge of the door jam and into the door jam. So we never have a soft edge or we never have a, an edge that's what we call like a, like a broken edge of clear paint. So it's, um, it's the best possible scenario to, uh, to painting a vehicle. And here's one we've seen quite a bit of. Um, got the car painted, it looks immaculate. So do you still plan on cutting and buffing? Yep, yep. I saw quite a few comments on this. Great, great questions. Uh, this was pertaining to the last video where we sprayed the car in gloss black and Brandon laid a beautiful paint job. Not to be confused though, he laid a minimal orange peel paint job. I mean, it's stunning. But of course, a week later, those, those materials and those chemicals shrink up the the solvents evaporate and so you get a little bit more orange peel than when you first sprayed it and we'll show you in future videos exactly how we rid that we color sand and polish and so yes we are going to color sand and polish starting with 800 grit all the way to 5000 grit and then we'll start polishing we'll actually run compound wool pad and then a polishing pad and uh, finally a good wax and it'll just look like a mirror but it's a lot of work and so that'll be probably two episodes in the future so stay tuned subscribe and uh, you'll see more of that all right so the car is painted we're starting to work on the doors we're starting to work on the other parts I mean, really, what's what's next? So yes, the car is painted, but only a portion of it. As you saw in the last video, the main body is painted and the door jams. We're, we're actually working right now as we speak on painting the dash. As you can see in front of me here, we have all the interior pieces, which we've prepped and Brandon has sprayed. So these are all gloss black. So we are still painting interior components. The most exciting news that I can tell you for what's next is our chassis from the Roadster shop is due here at the Hot Rod shop any day. As soon as we get that chassis, we're gonna drop in the LS engine and the 4L80 trans, and then we can set the body on the chassis and that will be monumental. So you mentioned some exciting news and um, you're gonna reveal who the owners of this vehicle are. Mm. And um, I know we're throwing people for a loop, so. Yeah, so it's, kind of a, it's kind of a little loop. Of course, here at the Hot Rod Shop, we, we build customer vehicles. We have a great clientele list. This one's special to me. So my, my mother 
uh, was was recently engaged. Her fiance wanted to build a vehicle um, through our shop, so he commissioned us to start on this El Camino. But the El Camino, the 59 specifically, has always been a dream car for my mom. So I was raised by my mother and she's kind of a hot rodder at heart. She's had Camaros and Corvettes and Thunderbirds and she's always had cool cars and they've always been black. She's always said to me, when I started the shop 16 years ago, she said, oh, I'd love a 59 El Camino one day. I can take it to Home Depot and put my little flowers in the back and it's so cool. Her dream car is a, is a 59 Impala, but she's, as she's gotten older, she wants the El Camino. So her fiance, Jay and I sat down and he wanted to do something special for her and so, we, uh, we found the El Camino and we are building their dream car, which is super cool. So it's, it's her favorite car. He loves it as well. He wanted the Roadster Shop chassis, the big engine, the reliability. She wanted the black paint job, the red interior. The coolest part is uh, when he unveiled this to her for her birthday a month ago, we gave her the Steve Stanford drawing. Remember the big rendition that he did for us of the 59 Elko dropped? We have that footage for you guys. I was able to uh, kind of sneak the cell phone into the restaurant as he gave her the drawing and told her what he was building for her. So absolutely a really heartfelt moment, almost a tearjerker and uh, she was totally shocked. So I'm excited to share with you guys. Let's check out the video when Jay gave my mother the drawing and broke the news of her dream car, 59 Chevrolet El Camino. gift is from Jay. <laughs> well, again, that concludes uh, the recap here for the 59 El Camino. We are um, hot on it to get this thing finished, hence why I am so exhausted. <laughs> Forgive me if I just look like I've been hit by a truck, man, because I feel like it. But through this little YouTube journey that we kind of relaunched here this year, I wanted to just say thank you guys for commenting and watching the videos and uh, kind of being a part of this particular build. It is a lot of work to do these videos and of course Miguel behind the camera has really made all this come true and happen. It's great to launch the video and to get feedback and to talk to you guys and see your comments. If we, we don't get to a response, we are reading them. So keep them coming, we really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions on there, drop them in the comments and we will address them at some point. So thanks a lot, you guys, for watching. From all of us here at the Hot Rod Shop and the channel Mackie and Machine, we'll see you on the next one.